o'clock. We are live. Six o'clock. Okay. <coughs> right. Health and Water Public Works Committee meeting, November 28th, 2022. Uh, Alderman Abbott? Here. Alderman Reese? Here. Alderman Olson? Here. A quorum is present. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh, okay. Item number three, approval of minutes. Make motion to approve the minutes for the October 24th, 2022 meeting. I'll second. Motion by Kim, second by Joe. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Do we have any citizen comments regarding public works? Seeing as though there are none, uh, monthly utilities. All right, court news report. Um, water fall flushing is complete and valve turning is underway. 45 hydrants were painted last Friday on the south end of town. New monitoring requirements received from PFAS testing. Monitoring begins April 2023. Requirements are then two consecutive quarters every three years. Lead and copper rules have changed and we will re be required to construct a database to identify every public and privately owned water service in the city by October 24. The DNR released safe drinking water loan program funding lists, both public side water service lateral replacement and well number four construction were approved. Principal forgiveness amounts were 130749 and 714223 respectively. Wastewater, we received our non-compliance letter for the July treatment facility overflow. Mavel was not found at fault for this incident. Torrential rains were the cause of the issue. Fall jetting is complete. Our new operator took and passed two operator exams. Intent to apply and scoring documents were submitted to the DMR, DNR for safe and clean water loan programs for Allen Street and Muzzy Allen Road projects. That's all she had. Do you know a little bit more about this lead and copper, the rules, and how? what are they going to do to construct this database? Do you know any more about that? I don't. I have a question on the water service. Are they talking about private wells? Are they talking about how many spigots you got sticking out your house for hydrants and hoses? Anybody know? No, I didn't take one the Tracy. Well, you could typically figure like a that service is something that someone's paying for versus a private to private, but it kind of sounds like all, it would have been better to say all sources rather than services. And I think that's the way it's leaning. I'm not sure Courtney would be able to answer the question. What was it your? So they're talking about. Identifying all services within the water services within the city. Mm -hmm. So obviously we have the city water, right? Uh, we're talking private wells, and we're talking. There are about several city. private wells. Yes. So it's, we're talking about city service for private wells. Right. I have a private well, so there's sort of vacuumers and a few others. Thank you. Questions answered. Thank you. Uh, moving on to number six, monthly engineering and planning report. Okay, next report, 2022 pavement maintenance program. Paving project work has been complete, waiting on pay request. 2022 Bridge Street Town & Country is working on uh, punch list items. 231 Breckenridge proposed martial arts studio, waiting for property owner to submit the conditional use permit for review. Once the conditional use has been approved, the occupancy permit that was filed can be reviewed. Hacker self-storage development. The proposed self-storage development in the River Knoll Industrial Park is progressing. 2023 street and utility projects funding application are being submitted for an alley street project and a water main loop project for the metal craft. 
2023 PMP project. The county is looking at repaving County Highway V next year. Preliminary estimates shared by the county puts the city's cost of this around 25,000. With the remaining budget, we are looking to repave part of Breckenridge Street. German Street Bridge, the report the county asked for has been submitted. We are waiting on a final <coughs> review from the county and the state. Dr. Stevens' office suggestion site plan has been reviewed and approved. Water service info, working with Courtney to get as much information as we can. Be, it can be found to meet the DNA requirement for providing water service sites and material for city services. That's all he had. Thank you. We have number seven, DPW report. I sure am. Leaf collection. We have two crews out daily picking up leaves. Posted a notice that the last day of collection was 11:23, but there are still a few piles out, and they're picking them up since the weather's still okay. Leaf collection has been very costly this year with the crew and the gas prices. Brush pickup. This is now once a month on the last Monday of the month. They worked on it today, and we'll finish tomorrow if needed. Um, December's pickup date: the 26th is a holiday, so they'll collect on the 27th. And that's all he had. Thank you. Monthly park report. And John. <laughs> uh, buildings report. Rentals will continue to be strong through the end of the year at the Pavilion and Senior Center. Rentals at the Pavilion are at about 125% of pre-COVID numbers, and the Senior Center rates are 175% pre-COVID numbers. We are starting to do our yearly building maintenance of painting and floors. All seasonal buildings are winterized with just a little more inside cleaning to do. Grounds report. The leaf mulching in the parks is done for the year. All shelters have been winterized for the year. The only park that stays open all winter is the dog park, and we'll continue to keep that maintained. Dan has been cutting trees in the parks and the city properties. He is hoping to have all the ash trees done by the end of the winter this year. As soon as the weather continues to stay cold, we will be putting an ice skating rink north of the senior center. We did receive two more quotes for the Ziegler Park lights to be replaced. These bids are half of the first bid. More details to come in the future. Senior Center report, the seniors are continuing with cards and bingo weekly. They are taking their trip to the theater show this week in Coloma. They are also planning some Christmas activities with a member meal. And that's all he had. Thank you. Item number nine, uh, discuss with possible action curb at the corner of Bridge Street and Oricon Street. Okay, there is no corner of Bridge and Oricon Bridge Street and Main Street. Right. Yes. By Sweet Peas. Right. Yeah. I, I, you know, I myself, I, I don't know why there wasn't a handicap ramp put in there when that was constructed in the first place. Isn't that some kind of a code? Uh, I have some info. Bob, do you have info too? Sure. You want to explain? I spent all day on the phone with Jack about it and the building inspector. Um, at one time, there was a shed over steps that went down to the basement of that building from the outside. And they took it down because they planned on putting up a ramp, which they hadn't yet, if they have to. But they walled, they filled that in and walled it off because at the bottom of the steps and underneath the sidewalk, it, there's a room that was constructed in about I think 1920, and it was done with, uh, it was redone again in <coughs> 1980 with structural structural concrete beams. That's an old, old sidewalk that goes all the way out to the curb. And if you slice that away to put in a, a ramp, it, the estimate then when they did Main Street was $37,000. Now it's $67,000. And uh, we don't know whose responsibility it would be. At the time, when when they did it, the engineer said the state law requires it to be, and the building inspector concurs that you have uh, you put in ADA ramps if it's if it's reasonable to do and <coughs> the only access. Well, they also have a carve out that says. If, there are handicap ramps on three of the four corners. That's adequate if you don't have a way to put them in on that corner. 
if you had to put them in on that corner, uh, there is no way to do it unless you put in another crosswalk somewhere further down. So they, the building inspector says, they can't. It can't be done, but we can. We do comply insofar as they can go down the block to the mump out, cross there, and come back. We can't put in a crosswalk in the middle of Bridge Street by by the auto de auto place because uh, you can't put a crosswalk at the end of a driveway. So they're looking into another solution, which would be some kind of a crosswalk, which would require a light that flashes and so forth. But for now, we are compliant with state laws. And uh, they say that it's an inconvenience, but it is it does comply with state laws. There doesn't have to be one at all four corners. So right underneath that concrete, it's a wide open room, yes. It goes right out to the street. How far on both sides, do you know? Pardon me? How far on both sides of the building, do you know? Uh, well, the room is uh, 18 by 24, and it goes out to the sidewalk, goes about, it, it's about even with, <coughs> to the south with the front door jam of the front door, and on the, it would be towards the vape shop, it would be, uh, equal with the edge of the building. So all of that under there is out. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just wondering if there's any possible way, if that's with the edge of the building, to put it, to cut it out a piece on that side where it, it would we, be. We tried, yeah, we tried, we, Jack is over there today. Uh, no, you, you can't do it unless you put in another crosswalk. We were thinking of putting a crosswalk Further down where that steps is going into that alley there. Mm -hmm. But that would be, can you imagine if somebody stepped into the crosswalk in the middle of I mean, that street? It's nuts the way it is. So uh, Jack is working on it. The building inspector says it's not necessary. Jack said he's satisfied that it can't be done. At first, it's gonna, I even suggested if you go to if you go to Delafield, there are areas where they have these little wedges. But those are customer supplied things, these little 45 degree little concrete or iron ramps to help somebody get a wheelchair chair up over the curb. Jack's checking into that with his person who supplies signs and stuff. Uh, that would have been all, if everybody read the <coughs> complaint that was on Naval Nosy Neighbors about the lady who couldn't get up over the curb and had to go down the street. That would have done it because she was only two inches short of getting over it. So Jack's checking into that and seeing if that's a possibility, but he had thought too that he could slice it back a little bit, but you no, know, right up to the edge of the side. The police chief is aware of that. that he, that's how he met my wife. She was fixing that slab of concrete when he was hired. And it's it's all it's all hollow under there. The whole sidewalk is hollow. This comes up every couple of years, and we have the state look at it a couple of times. Yeah. The state wasn't willing to pay for it any of the times we brought it up to them. Yeah. And uh, that's why it was designed to really well. Right. So they're still looking into it, but I think a good, a nice fix might be this little wedge thing. Yeah. It, you know what I mean? It's, I don't know if it'd be permanent. I don't know if it'd become a hazard for people just walking. Jack's checking into that, but he's satisfied that the city has done its required work and he's trying to work on something else to help alleviate the situation. So it sounds like we have quite a few buildings that have rooms underneath the sidewalks. Well we have well this one is not right what's well, another one? Audubon Inn. I thought I heard this others but maybe I'm mistaken. Audubon Inn does have one, yes, yeah. you're right. <coughs> yeah. But none of the other ones as far as I know on Main Street have any it's in the right of way. It's not supposed to be there, but it was there before the COVID light. Before they, well, they still had horses on their page. So. Anyway, that's what's happened today with it, and I was on the phone all day about it. So. Otherwise, it's not my business anymore. <laughs> okay, thank you, Bob, for that information. You're welcome. So is there a way we can record this so if it comes up again in a few years and somebody else thinks it thinks we ought to do something well, we can 
refer back to us. We have a young police chief here who are on the show. <laughs> Our meetings are now archived on YouTube, so oh, yeah, oh, yeah. it'll be there. So, do we, so does this get tabled or until we maybe find out what Jack can do? We could re add it to the agenda if we need to. If, when Jack finds something, you could just take no action at this point. No action taken on this matter. Uh, do I get a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Motion made, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Public safety is next. Yes. Call to order the public safety meeting Monday, November 28th, 2022 at 6. 16. Can I get, oh, take the roll, please. Alderman Hinkle. Here. Alderman Bob Smith. Here. Alderman Roger Smith. Here. A quorum is present. Um, item number two, approval of the minutes of the September 26, 2022 meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any citizens' comments for public safety? Hearing none, number four, monthly EMS report. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yep. 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 Okay, hi, Christine. All right, perfect. Uh, our calls for service report, about two weeks ago, we reached over a 1,000 calls for this year. Um, so I, I know every month is kind of like a broken record, but we are incredibly busy. Um, and we have six weeks to go this year for this year, so we expect that number to continue to rise. Right now we're about 92 calls ahead of where we were last year at this time. Um, number two for our staffing update. Uh, we're very happy right now with our staffing numbers. We continue to be pretty solid, um, but that can change in a heartbeat. Uh, you know, losing one good EMT can make all the difference for us. It takes at least, at least two years to train an EMT to be a meaningful member of our service. Um, we did hire uh, Carly Leg. She's currently a student in Julie's, I always call it Julie's class because she's the one that brought it to Mayville for us, but she's currently a student and the resident of Mayville. Um, she does have family in Mayville. She's a uh, relative of Jen and Mike Thorson, so we already have them as public servants, so it's awesome that she's chosen to join us. Um, we're excited about her continuing in the class and getting her license in the near future. Julie, you want to talk about the training that we're doing currently? <laughs> Yep, so for um, November, we're going to be working on hypothermia training. Unfortunately, as it gets cold, um, that's something that living in Wisconsin is something that we definitely have to train on. So we'll be doing that um, pretty much if, uh, finish up our training for the year. So we're working on getting ready for our license renewal next year. Um, so we'll be um, hitting the ground running in 2023 with the rest of the training needed for us for our license renewal. Any other questions? Okay. okay. For our equipment grant purchases for number four, I just wanted to make mention of that. We did get our first uh, half of our flex grant allocation, a little over $30,000. Um, so we have started making some fairly significant purchases. We have to use all of those funds before they release the second half of that grant in early 2023. So we have made some purchases for the flex grant. Um, we bought new um, Apple iPads for all of our ambulances. We bought um, basic equipment. We needed stethoscopes and blood pressure cuffs and all those things. Um, we made it our mission a long time ago for those of you that are newer um, to try to buy most of our EMS equipment. We don't put that on the tax rolls. We've done it through fundraising and for grants. And so we continue to be very fortunate to find ways to make that a reality for our budget and for um, responsible spending. So uh, we, we've been buying several things, but that will all come out of that grant, um, flex grant purchases. Um, we also got a larger allocation of our FAP, and I think at our last meeting I mentioned the stair chairs that we are buying. That is over $25,000 to buy three stair chairs. Um, the difference in the new stair chair is that we'll be able to, by a press of a button, 
bring a patient upstairs or downstairs uh, patients that are three and four hundred pounds so um the the wear and tear and possible injury to our staff is greatly reduced by equipment by this like this so um we also have those on order we won't get them till spring but again i'm required to spend those dollars um to get the other half released so i did uh, we did make the purchase on those and we'll get those not until spring but we we need to pay that um the last thing can you still hear me i'm sorry yep yep okay um the last thing i wanted to bring to your attention tonight is some repairs that we had to do to one of our ambulances um ambulances are heavy and we had some, some suspension issues we had an ambulance that was riding very rough and uh, we did take it and get a quote and this isn't something i need to bring the council for approval although it's unbudgeted funds um, they were it was over seven thousand dollars in repairs um, to replace the u-joints and things like that um, and springs that needed to be taken care of uh, but those funds come out of our equipment replacement fund that is our contract monies that we have with our townships and villages those fund, funds are specifically for a, either a repair or a purchase of a new ambulance. So this is an unbudgeted repair, had to be done. We can't have an ambulance that is unsafe to drive and this one was to the point of being unsafe. Uh, it has since been repaired and Julie and Devin did pick it up over the holiday weekend and it's back in service for us. Uh, any questions that you have for me at all or Julie? Nope. Thank you, ladies. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Number five, monthly fire department report. Good evening, everybody. Hello. We'll start with the equipment update. Good evening. Uh, for 29.63, uh, the repair guy is coming either this week yet or next week. Uh, we got an auto loop on a pump that needs to be repaired. And they're going to do the engine department insulation. That's they finally have your time to do that. Um, I don't know if it's going to happen. Yes, yet this year on 2964, we have some wiring that needs to be cleaned up from different people wiring things. It's there's a lot of joints we're going to just run wires, so we don't have any shorts anywhere. 65, where we're going to start replacing uh, the cylinders I told you about earlier in the year. A window finally opened and we're going to pull one out. We're going to try to get two done this year, but we don't know what the time frame is going to be once we get that one out, put the new one in and send it out to get rebuilt. Um, the cylinder is paid for already. So, or is it? no, it's not paid for, but it will get paid for this year. And then it'll just be labor uh, for the other three. And then when we're done, we should have a spare because there's one truck we don't have to do this. We replaced those cylinders about five, eight years ago. Moving on, uh, 71, it did pass its ladder inspection and the PM just on the ladder portion and the, uh, the outriggers. Uh, it did pass all the requirements. They put loads on it and they see if there's any drift. They have a, a chart and everything was in specs on that. So that was uh, good. Uh, 2972, we have no issues at this time. The command unit, 2983, we did have the fuel system repaired. Uh, it was a chase after, after, after. We wound up spending close to $11,000 to get it to run. So it is running now. Um, sometime this week, I'm going to run it up to Fond du Lac. We still have air bubbles in the fuel system, and it acts up once in a while. Uh, they said we just need to run it hard, and when we're going up a hill, really hammer it to try to put it to force more fuel through. Uh, so hopefully once I run it up to find the lag and back, it should really be like that. Every time we use it, it's getting better. Uh, there's no repairs to be done at the station at this time. Uh, and I'm still working for um, opposing ground ladders for next year. I can get somebody to do it, that it's double the money, but I'm still talking to the company that used to do it, which is half the money. They didn't have personnel last year. They're looking at 2023 to see if they can come in Wisconsin. If they do, they said we would be at higher on the list. So I have until January to request a quote from the 70, the, the 70 cents a foot versus 33 cents a foot. So, We'll let you know where we go on that. That's all I have for equipment. Any questions? 
All righty. Have a good night. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Yep. All right, guys. For the second portion for personnel, uh, we're currently at 21 members. Technically, we're at 22, but uh, we hired another firefighter last week. Uh, he's still going through the process. I believe he's heading over to be able to have all his medical screening done, and we'll be up to the 22 members. Uh, unfortunately, we have uh, one member that has some pretty severe uh, health issues, and we just got notified yesterday that he's going to be taking a leave of absence, might be permanent. Um, he's one of our longest serving members of 40 years. Um, so I'll keep you guys updated. I'll let you know what's going on there. I'll let the PFC know what's happening there too, in case we have to do retirement or whatever. Um, we currently have uh, two members that are in firefighter one and hazmat class. They're going to be graduating here soon. So every member that is currently a firefighter will have their firefighter one certification. And we do have one that is enrolled in fire officer one class. Uh, we also took a poll. We only have a few firefighters that are not fire two certified, which is pretty significant uh, certification. Um, and about half of those uh, firefighters said that they're going to get that certification. This <coughs> they will have about 90% of the firefighters be uh, uh, certified firefighter too, so we're pretty good. So any questions about that? Okay, yeah, what's the little certifications, the classes mean? What's the difference between a one and a two? It's just more training, it's more specific. So firefighter one, um, how it was in years past, is have what's called entry. And entry, I think, originally was 30 hours. Do you remember, John? I think it was 60. 60. I think it was 30, so you put in and then 60 to be certified. Um, and then what the state did is they keep on, which is one of the reasons why it's so hard to keep firefighters, they keep on raising the bar. Um, so now they want everybody to be firefighter one, especially if we're going to be providing mutual aid to any other county, to any other area, through this MAVIS, our mutual aid box line system. Um, so what we did, we kind of took the bull by the horn that I said, hey, why don't we just get firefighter two done, taken care of? And that's the highest certification that you can do in the state of Wisconsin for a firefighter. After that, you jump into the officer certification. So we have several firefighters that are fire uh, officers or fire fire one fire officer two. So that's about as high as you can go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm quite busy. We have had 18 calls since our last meeting. So we're at um, 115 year to date. So it looks like we're on pace for 125 if this continues. We've had four that involved with uh, EMS assist. There was four um, calls for uh, gas or gas leak. Two death investigation assist, two fire alarms, uh, one exhaust filter fire at one of their local factories, uh, a garage fire here in town, cornfield fire, which we assisted. He got me on one for down wires and then one water rescue, one with one car accident. So, that's where we're at. Any questions? Yeah, the fire, the gas uh, line break downtown, was that a broken line, an accident, vandalism? The one at uh, uh, Don Ramon. Yeah, you yeah. Can you say? No, I cannot say. Um, I will say this the problem has been taken care of. Um, the business was closed down by Line Energy. It was a significant gas leak. There was a risk of explosion. Um, so we evacuated about a block around that and uh the levels were very very high but i cannot get into the details of the call obviously for privacy reasons but uh i they were closed they were open today so i understand that they must have got it fixed right away so all right thanks yep. all right thank you guys thank you, thank you. um monthly police department report I don't have anything. Thank you, Ryan. All good. All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 You're adjourned at 629. Finance. Okay. Well, the finance committee order at 629. Uh, please take the roll. Alderman Smith. Here. Alderman Hinkle. Here. Alderman Roger Smith. Here. A quorum is present. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second it. Motion being seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any questions? Any 
Any corrections, questions, any of that? Okay. Item number three, citizen comments. Do we have anybody here for, let's see, citizen comments? Nope. Item number four, tag center report. Um, starting off here, we got the membership report. Um, like I said this last meeting, it's kind of hard to look at these numbers because we're at the end of November already and we're looking at October numbers. So, um, but just some notable ones, we have 12 more one-year family memberships in October, um, 10 more monthly family memberships, and then just in general, uh, daily users, we have from September to October, we have over 120 more people using the aquatic center, um, over 30 uh, people using our fitness center, and then uh, like 150 uh, more users in our gymnasium. So those are great numbers to see. Um, I know just today from being in the office, I had, I, I had eight new memberships come in, all different types. So. We're on the up. We're on the up there. Um, any questions on membership report? All right, moving forward, I got the staffing update. Um, we did get someone hired for weekend and nightly um, front desk clerk. She, her name is, I don't know if it was that again, but um, she will be starting within the next week. Um, we still are in need of a nighttime and weekend cleaner. Custodian. Um, no interest with that yet, but we're hoping something's forward. Lifeguards, uh, we are, in my opinion, thankfully, no longer with the YMCA, and we are back to uh, staffing lifeguards here for the city um, as of October, or sorry, November 13th. So we are looking for more lifeguards, more um, open swim lifeguards or daily when we're open from 4 45 to noon every morning we are covered but just the weekend shifts and open swims um, those are big uh, times where we are not fully staffed um, just to have access to the slide and whatnot any questions on staffing update we offered uh, to get past the lifeguards you have give them a bonus if they Get a friend to come in and recommend a friend, like a, you know, right? Yep, um, we did give them all bonuses this pay period just for the fact of going from the YMCA. And right. back. Um, I'm okay. talking about a special bonus if you get a friend to sign up, right? right. To sign up, well, that's I haven't thought of it. Yeah, that's a way to, uh, you know, I'm looking for more. We have a lot of high school kids, and they're all great. Um, but just more like uh, maybe a retiree or something like that. So but I will keep that in mind for sure. Uh, Tate maintenance report from Scott Homensberger. We had a water leak over the weekend, a pipe broke in the men's soccer room. Uh, there was damage to the drywall and paint on the ceiling. We had a Bernard, Bernard plumbing come and repair um, it this morning. Fitness equipment, Jason Maxwell from Lifetime, Lifetime Fitness has been here and he has been working um, at all the preventative maintenance on all the machines. It's being done and it should be done by tomorrow. Thank goodness. Um, and then previous daycare and new party rooms. So Jamie's Clubhouse rented out one of our, uh, it was like a child's, an early child's um, center room but we are, we clean that up since they are no longer at the tag, renting it out. And we um, we painted it, we cleaned it all up, patched all the holes in the wall, got the kids smell out, and we're ready to rent that out when it is needed. So that is that. Any questions on maintenance report? I, I have a question. Yes. For um, when Bernard Plumbing does all the work throughout the city, how come you don't get beds and other plumbing? 
detectors or somebody else that, besides that? That's a good question. I'm not the minimum requirement for it. So they don't have to put it out to bid unless it hits 25000 So that's probably why. It's not a bad idea. All right, on the recreation report, um, swim lessons are going great. Uh, those high schoolers are great with those kids. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, we have 136 total kids throughout all three days that we offer them. It's Tuesday night, Thursday nights, and Saturday nights. We have three more weeks of them. And then they're starting back up in February. Um, every other Tuesday until the middle of March, we have bag toss and ping pong leagues at the Maple Park Pavilion. Um, it's kind of cool to see all those people on a Tuesday night light up the pavilion and have a good time, hang out, drink beer. It's what they do. <laughs> so they're a fun group. Uh, we have 12 bag toss teams and then six ping pong teams. Uh, women's sixes volleyball is going great. Uh, we have 10 teams for that. It's every Wednesday night and that goes to the middle of March as well. So that's like a 19 <coughs> week league. Thursday Pickleball League um, is in session that goes until December 22nd. Um, I'm make, at the start of the year, I'm making this into, into the one Pickleball League into two, one more beginner league experience. So just to get them having more fun, I think we're going to make two separate leagues for that. Youth Basketball is going good on Saturday mornings. It is from 8 to 10 at the TAG. Uh, we have 40 kids signed up for both age groups. Uh, one age group is three to five year olds, and first through third grade is the other one, um, and that goes till December 17th. A um, couple plans for 2023. Uh, I would like to do another volleyball camp, basketball camps, with the high school coaching staff for both of those sports. Um, how staffing goes with our lifeguards, I would like to do movie and swim programs and crab and swim. Um, and then I would like to bring back hosting kids basketball tournaments at the day. Yeah, when I was a kid, that was like the big thing. I always was in a tournament at the takes and every year. Um, so I'm going to try to get on Wiz. It's called Wiz. Oops, I think it was Wiz Hoops, but it's not Wiz Sports. Um, and I can get interest from teams out there. So hopefully we can bring um, some revenue in there. Those are very well attended and popular with a lot of people in the world. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Brings business to downtown and all that stuff too. Yeah. So that is the information report. Any questions? Anybody? No. Thank you a lot. Thank well you, Kaylin. Of course. Okay. Item number five, treasurer's report. Yes. Okay. So for October, we are 83% done with the budget year for expenses and revenue. Um, but I will list the percentages for expenses that we're at. For fire, they're at 66%. EMS is at 99%. City, uh, General City is at 98%. Um, police are at 89%. DPW is at 69%. Library is at 83%. Parks and Rec is at 73%. And TAG is at 75%. Um, on the ADP front, ADP ran a mock payroll the week of November 18th to match up uh, with the payroll we had just run. Um, and they got everything to match ours. Um, so this week we are going to go live with ADP. Um, I will be doing it the first couple times um, to get all the kinks worked out once everything looks good. We will have a meeting with the department heads and show them what to do. Um, we feel that it would be nice for us to know what we're doing so when they have questions, they can come to us and we can walk them through it and everything. Um, uh, so really um, some things that we did that I think it'll be pretty easy for the department heads. Most of them just have to put information into a spreadsheet like they have been doing. Um, so we set that up in ADP uh, workforce now. So it's a kind of their name, the payroll code, and then put the hours in kind of like they were doing. So if that's what they want to keep doing, and we find that most of the department heads do that, some one of the modules that we have with it, time and attendance, we may not have to keep with it. Um, we'll see, see how that goes. Um, I finished up the preliminary audit with Baker Tilly on November 18th. 
Um, we had a meeting uh, when we were done and everything went pretty well. They got everything they needed. Um, there's some new GASPI rules for leases and special revenues that we're going to work on with Baker Tilly. Um, uh, and they will be working on the 2022 audit, November 14th to the, through the 17th. And again, uh, March 2nd and 3rd, they're kind of splitting it up too because they need a lot of info and that kind of helps us at year end, get some done for one time period and then another. Um, starting the next few weeks, I'll be starting year end rec uh, reconciliation of accounts um, like WRS. They uh, have a bunch of ports that need to be uh, done for year end special reports that they require. Uh, then last week I worked on getting the county all the specials and charges that needed to go on the tax bills. This week, I'm sending the county the mill rate forms, all the levy sheets, the statement of assessment, and the PC202, which is our tax increment worksheet. It's got to be all done and sent to them. And then the statement of taxes are due December 19th to the county. So that's what I've been working on. It's been a busy month. When do the tax bills come? Um, well, I believe it's plan around the 10th we'll be sending it out it's usually we like we usually get the taxes the, the beginning of the second week of December I would say it's kind of the beginning to the middle of the week and then we send them out it just depends on the county and how they're doing and maybe how weekends fall okay anybody have any questions I do yeah um on page seven So you'll have to let me know because I don't have oh okay. I don't have access to well, your packets. Just, so do you know which sheet you're looking at? Which uh, report? The comptroller. Uh, right off uncollected. What what does that normally go for? What is that? <coughs> I'm gonna have to look. Do you know what page? Sorry, which page are you on? Um, page seven, the little letter seven, says pack page 24. This is page 24. My page 24 is in here. So. She's looking it up for me. I don't, I don't have that okay. packet things. Okay. Which one are you talking about, Kim? Yeah. Uh, 10-515-510-307-381-0000. Okay. I'm right off on collecting. Um, that's just if there's some bills that we uh, would write off at the year end that we can't collect. Most bills would go onto their tax bills. We always budget a little bit. Um, for it, but I haven't, I mean, I've only been here, you know, one year, so I haven't written off any, but, you know, after a while, you would look at some of them to see if, if they're collectible or not. Also, we would use the, I forgot exactly what it's called, but we go through the state and we could intercept their taxes, also, <coughs> um, personal taxes, if there's bills that aren't being paid also. So I don't know how much we'll really use it a lot or if we've even really used it in the past, but that is what that's there for. And most businesses have a bad debt right off that they can that okay. they can do. I was just looking at the no, that's miscellaneous a, right yeah. off, and I'm, I just want to know what what does that involve? What, no, that's a great what question. Use that for? Yep. So that might be extra money that we may not use, but then it's there if we need to write something off. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Jason on her report? I've got a couple. Yeah. Um, maybe help me understand I'm looking I'm kind of getting in the weeds here a little bit so for example on the weed control we've got a budgeted amount of zero um, last year we spent 1400 almost 1500 bucks this year we spent 495 and it's the dollar amounts don't mean anything I'm just curious mm -hmm. how we wind up with such a disparity from one year to the next I, mean, I don't know if that's something you can so is it in the revenue or the expenses that you're looking at it? Is it like a fund number and then like a 
public charges for services? So we are collecting that money. So that's revenue. So the weed control would be if um, Jack needs to go out and um, like cut whack or weeds or whatever grass because people aren't cutting it, yeah. then we would send out an invoice for that. Okay. So we have people behaving themselves the entire this year. Yep. Thank yep. You. Thank you. If I could suggest, um, just make a suggestion, a friendly suggestion. Yeah, absolutely. That maybe for the finance committee and that you have a copy of the packet so you can follow along when, mm -hmm. when, when people are going to ask questions based on We'll have to get her set up in the system. What's that? We'll have to set her up in the system, but we could do that. Yeah, that'd be really yeah. useful. Yeah, that'd be great. We take longer looking for yeah. what we're looking at <laughs> than we do answering the question. Yeah. I think I saw something earlier. So now I'm down on the interest and income miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. And there's one on general administration donations for Audubon. Yep. Um, so that's our revenue for Audubon days. Okay. So our budget amount is zero, but our actual is sixty-five thousand dollars. So explain what's yeah, what's absolutely. Going on with that. So we usually don't budget anything for that because um, we bring money in. That kind of is what it is, and then we have an expense line that would go against it. And so we usually have some money left over, but that is for the committee. But it hasn't ever been budgeted um, before, so I have not budgeted. So um, money comes in, where's the money come from? Uh, donations. A lot of times um, companies will donate. Um, it could be, so what are, it'd what, be so any what, revenues. What I don't think that's on the agenda. We're not to that. Yeah, yeah we're, we're actually going to talk about Audubon Days we're, we're, specifically next. The financial report is, <laughs> well, this is on the financial yeah, report. Yeah, I, I, I we this, budget so zero that. for okay. that revenue so that comes in. Yeah, it's on the next Okay, all right, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. But it, but we don't. But it's just kind. It's kind of its own little. And we don't think. We mainly don't because it's not really. We haven't decided yet if it's our business or not. All we do is act as a pass through. All right. Well, we'll we could that. like in 2020, then there wasn't any Audubon. You right. know, I mean, there could be a thing right. that comes about that all of a sudden you don't have it. But it's not like government funded or grants that you rely on. This is you know for the greater good. We bring money in and. The money yeah, will yeah, go yeah. out against and it. Don't take, get me wrong there, Roger. I'm not slapping your hand. I'm just telling nope. you we got to take these things in order, otherwise we're violating the open meetings. No, nope, nope, nope. Is that right, Sarah? No, I'm not. not okay. Get ahead of herself. <laughs> I, I, got, <laughs> I got a bunch of other questions. I got a bunch of other questions. Are they, here. Do they pertain to the first one or the second? One? Uh, well, for the report one. here. No, so go ahead. That one's good. Go ahead. For, for the report here. Um, so I'm looking at general administration. We've got sick leave pay. Mm -hmm. We didn't budget any dollars, but yet we spent twenty five hundred bucks on sick leave pay. So why wouldn't we budget dollars for sick leave if we know we need to spend it? Okay, yeah, it's on this page here. General admin sick leave pay. I'm not really sure why there wasn't anything in there. It looks like there hasn't been in the last two years. Yeah, and if. I mean, I mean, I get it. The that that would be something I'd look right. into because we didn't really have anything Same the thing prior year. All these vision and vacation. You can answer that good. Nobody You're getting too comfy over there, anyways. <laughs> Actually, all that. So, simply pay as a budget because we can't predict what we're going to take off for the year for sick pay. And the sick pay is offset by the employee's regular wage for that day. So because they're not there working that day, you're still covering that. You're still covering you're still getting paid. So then we just budgeted through yeah. your yeah, really okay. okay, thank yeah. you. So it's a net zero difference. Yep, yeah. yeah. All right. That helps. Thank you. Got more there? I do. So let's that's an odd one if you want to talk about the later. Um my last question is we have uh, something called data processing. What what is that? It's not a lot that's of dollars, but yeah. data processing. Yeah. Is this um, where the wise guy stuff goes? Yeah, a lot of the wise guys goes in there, but I can find out exactly for sure what's in there and then send you a report of it so you can see the Why breakdown. The All right, T service. Oh, okay. Okay. That, that is my question. 
Oh, that's that's really how long ago. Wise guy. Oh, that's what wise guy. Yep. Wise guy. That's like, yeah, he's, yeah, you're going to send the wise guys after. So. I thought, yeah. <laughs> Roger. Uh, All right. Okay. Thank you. Yep. That, that answers my question for this time. Anybody else have any questions? Uh, don't get you started. <laughs> All right. Then thank you, Tracy. I'll go on to item number six. Other items of discussion, possible action. Item number one in that is discuss with possible action rock and boom and automobile days accounts. And I will say, before we start discussing it, uh, thanks to both of you for what you did. Really appreciate it. And the reason this is on here is not to approve the, the accounts. We've already done the, the the finance committee has already approved all the bills and the accounts for all of this. Uh, but we are we are mainly deciding to move the balances, or if you would call it profit, which consists of the money they made over expenses, plus the money they started with from the last time they had an event, to the next group who's going to, and that's what we're here to decide, what kind of group it's going to be, the next group that's going to handle it. it it's, uh, you saw there's a letter from the attorney in your packet. And uh, I can give you a little history if you don't mind, Sarah. The previous mayor had, had an idea to start up a festivals committee or a event committee, which is probably a good idea. We have so many events, and, you know, Easter baskets and Audubon days and, Rock and Boom, and parades, and it might be a, in downtown Mayville uh, has a few things, and Maxwell Street days. Some people incorporate their their uh, farmers market into that, and that's a good idea. Although it's fraught with a couple of problems of its own, because if we have a city committee doing that, then it's subject to open meeting laws, and you have to publish an agenda, and you have to do all kinds of jumping through hoops. It's hard to be government. I mean, because the, the volunteer groups we had were easy, but that puts a little more pressure on the city hall to take in all the money and keep track of it for them so they can give it back to them at the end of the year. And so we have to decide, I don't know if we can decide tonight, maybe if we can get some, is it okay to have people in the audience talk? I imagine it is. I think so. But I would just, I would quick go back. We're not necessarily changing groups. No. We're really deciding if the city is going to continue to right. maintain or the finances or whether groups. their groups yeah. are going to maintain the finances. Rock and Boom is pretty much fine. It's been work, working fine. If you remember the uh, Chamber of Commerce used to handle uh, Audubon days until they overspent or lost a lot of money or lost interest in doing it and then we had some people gladly take it over and it was a success but it's it's a one one's a one man operation the other is a one woman operation and it's a taxi and uh i don't know if it needs more structure to keep going to make sure it keeps going uh how do you guys feel about it we go up there Sure. Actually, yeah. these new things will pick you up oh, right there. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to. <laughs> so for Rock and Boom, um, there's a few things. Number one, um, the if the city decides to not hold the funds and not sign the contracts, um, it makes it really hard for a private citizen group to run Rock and Boom purely with the sense with the because of the uh, possibility for a lawsuit for. Uh, I mean, the guy who blows off the fireworks has a $5 million liability limit. The city has, I have no idea, I'm assuming five or 10 million. But if a private citizen group were to try to run Rock and Boom and something bad were to happen, that private citizen group would be named in that lawsuit. Mm -hmm. um, with the city approving, signing the contracts for the fireworks, for the bands, for all that stuff, it lies on the city and the city has statutes of limitations where they can't be sued for large uh, large sums of money. It protects that, uh, that group that is, that is running. Um, the history of Rock and Boom is it started as a 
uh, being run by the firemen. Then firemen stopped doing it. Mike Kurtz kind of took it over. That's how it became the city, uh, a city run, I guess, not city run, but a city budgeted item. Um, so I guess that's that's kind of where Rock and Boom stands. How does that, is that a private committee? Do you have a, just a bunch of people get together? Or what uh, it's, a, it's a committee. Uh, the funny thing is, is the, I believe the city attorney is on the committee. <laughs> um, the, the Mike Bearwall, and so it's Nolan, Mike Bearwall, Tom Schusler, myself, Don Gint, and Tim Bakke. So it does have legs. It'll keep going even if you decide. Yeah, it's kind of, it's run by uh, a collaboration of the Lions, the Rotary, Main Street Mayville, the Chamber, and the City. Okay. And the, okay. Uh, well then, how oh, about do you want to speak? Yes. Uh, so I, I don't, I guess I don't have a preference either, either way. <clears throat> or the safety of the money, I guess. That's always been a, the money portion has always been a little scary to me. But um, the only thing I liked about the city portion was that I, I, Audubon Davis doesn't have a 401c or any sort of paperwork to back it up. So I had to be taxed for anyone that required the documents to say Audubon Days specifically versus just pushing it through with the city of Mandel, I had to be taxed on, on everything. So that uh, that would be nice to have that. I didn't even think about the liability portion. I guess I thought since it was on the city park, it was already covered under that. But, or at your own risk. Um, so I don't care either way. I guess I would just have to have <clears throat> some kind of a checks and balances system in which, because I don't want this coming back on, on me, that, that there has to be some kind of triple signature of money being taken out of it, because it is just me. As like an actual member of the Ottawa Days Committee, I have plenty of volunteers to help me, but as for a committee, it is just me. So I that scares me just a little bit having one person having access to money. You know how much uh, of your expenses were paid? I thought if you went to the hardware store <laughs> or the grocery store, they have a she could buy the one. Yeah. Yeah, she yeah. Could I thought they charge. had our tax numbers on yep. file there. Like um, True Value, she did use that, so, no, right? Just, Somebody did. They asked me, and I just most of the most of everything I just paid for myself, and then I had the city reimburse me for it. Right. And then there was then there was a trail for everything. The city, but your committee could save all this tax money, right? You follow what I'm saying? No. So if you bought, let's say you. You're saying you bought something at the hardware store, for example, you just paid for it. Yeah. That receipt you turned in had sales tax on it. Correct. So it's too late to claw that back. It'd be a big effort to claw that back. But if you used our tax number just by saying this is for Audubon days. <coughs> in, some, in some places we're okay with that. But for instance, like the beer license, I had to pay tax on all the beer. Because I said, well, we, we it's going to be under city of Maine, all the, the license was under Audubon days. You do. You would have to pay tax on, on the beer, unless you have a seller's permit. Right. So that, or you could have somebody else handle the sale of the beer as well. But the beer is one thing. I'm talking about all the other stuff. Oh, right. Build the stage and you know, uh, those are some of the things. I mean, you'd have more income. You'd have more of a profit if you didn't have to spend. You would say five and a half percent if you were paying sales tax. And you don't charge sales tax when you resell it, do you? No. no. The other the other thing is I <clears throat> I guess this maybe isn't hundred percent pertains to it, but I would like it to be a four hundred one C or something separate just because of donations. Know, really five hundred one. Five hundred one, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Because um, of the donations. Donations. Um, a lot of people had also asked me where the money goes, and I don't have right. really any except for the city takes it and uses it for because per my understanding if the city wants to they can take out of that account and i have yeah they would money yeah but they they we you, kept you it just you guys yes right. but if, i mean i if guess if you wanted to you have access to it in the city right. account. well when they like if somebody does donations it has to go for what the donation was for right so if you had a 501c3 yeah they would give you money you tell them you would give them a receipt for this charity or purpose and they would be able to claim it. Okay, a lot of people are reluctant to, to make donations if they can't claim it. 
mm -hmm. right? get some credit for it. In there. Right. I didn't. I didn't face as much of that this year, only because I think it was my first year and people wanted it right, right. so badly. But do I feel that it will happen again? I, I feel this discussion is no way a criticism. You you rescue Lord Van Dyke. God bless you for that. <laughs> this is a way of going forward to get some of these things smoothed out so you can maximize your uh, the, your efforts and so that the city see the other thing is what, what is all that so this is Seems like Mike has worked out some of the bugs, so his works kind of seamlessly, and we might have to work out some of the bugs. So yours does. That the way it's working now, it creates the city finance committee has to approve all of your bills one at a time when they come through. We do it as we do, uh, and that can be a hassle. And our financial officer is a little bit taxed right now, and so is our lady at the window taking water money. So. All of the receipts coming in that way are, can be another level of effort by them. I'm just saying this 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 committee and the council has to decide. We have a lot of events that I want to see keep going: Easter basket stuff and and uh, uh, the parades and, and all of that. And maybe we should have some some shell for these to work out of because. That gives them legs. Then they last longer. You know what I mean. And there has to be a way we can buy stuff or purchase services and save the sales. We're not required to pay sales tax. We're a city. Right. Um, so I don't know, Sarah. You. This is mainly. What do you have to add to all this? Um. I would. I we're fine with doing either way. We would continue to to do it. We probably will have to iron some things out with Audubon Days. Rock and Booms really has, you know, it's been going on long enough that it's seamless. We write out a couple checks. It's not a big deal. Audubon Days this year, because it was new and because it was three days versus one day, it was a lot of work on <laughs> our side as well as Kristen's side, obviously. But Lisa spent a good, good deal of time, you know, organizing, sorting, paying bills for Audubon Days. Um, so that's something we'll have to think about from Kristen's side. Being that she's paying for everything for herself and having to be reimbursed is kind of a pain for her right. because it's taking, you know, sometimes a, a week, week and a half to get the checks. Um, whereas if she would take the money and move it into their own account, you could get a debit card or a check or something to pay these expenses. Obviously, you'd have to have some kind of committee or something right. behind it approving it. Because um, when she's paying for it herself, she has to pay sales tax right. and then we yeah. do reimburse her for that, but that's really something I'm trying to you cut down on back. is the you sales can, tax. You can, file for it. <coughs> you can file for it after the fact, that's more mm -hmm. trouble than it's worth. But yeah. I'm wondering if she could use a, I don't know. Can I mean, make a suggestion sure. for Audubon Days? And this, this, it doesn't take a whole lot of work, but you could set up a, an account at the point, the accounts that you do business at. And then <laughs> instead of turning in every single receipt, you're turning in a, you're sending a statement of, but you, you know, know like, yeah, Piggly Wiggly, it could yeah. be the city of Mayville Audubon Days. Mm -hmm. right? so that's it. the the difference between Rock and Boom, I guess, and, and Audubon Days is because Rock and Boom has the collaboration of, of everybody else, they're not the city isn't paying for food or beer or any of that stuff. That's the Rotary Club is handling. Right. So it's uh, the the city is only handling bands and fireworks and a little small advertising budget. So it is. Uh, well, what if, Sarah, what is uh, maybe we should table this and work it out more, but yeah. what would be the problem? Just give her a city one purpose credit card or a debit card or something like that? I don't know if we would be able to do that. We'd have to look into that. Yes, because she's not an employee of the city. I'm not really sure where our liability right. would be with giving somebody who isn't, but you know. We, we, I think we could work some things out and really look into some stuff. Um, 
because she's buying it on behalf of the city. So right. how does that kind of work also? You know, that's some of the things I think it'd be nice for the three of us to sit down, kind of brainstorm some uh -huh. things. And then we can bring the questions up that need to be okay. like, can we, we do it because of this? Out, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mainly what we're working on now is there was 28 or 29,000, I forget which, left over from each one, both of you. And it's going to oh, the next. Gosh. Next so year. it's the next year, yeah. yeah. And uh, that's what you know. And we we'll, 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 you want to do that? They want it set up, and it went. Your part went smooth. Her part was the first year it went smooth for that. But we have other things where we might want to add to this, like the Easter egg hunt or the Easter basket thing, and some of the other stuff. If there's going to be more celebrations, events, you know, follow the same thing. So I don't know. Do you have any idea? If you have, uh, I have a question. Can I say something about like that? Sure. Just with, because with the rec budget, I know the city fireworks, the rock and roll donations, we have like a budgeted amount on my fund 85 every. That's just where we stick it. Money. So could that be like, could it be under? That's that's where phone that's phone where phone. it is right now. That's where we stick the money. So the even Audubon days? yeah, Audubon uh, days has a similar thing to the fireworks, where all the donations that come in, we stick in their own separate account. All the expenses that go out, we stick in their own separate account. You so see the fireworks, a, yeah. Right, yeah you see it's in your fund, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But but hers just goes on to like a different. It's it's the form. same thing. It's just a different it's account. Besides, yeah. she needs a bunch of two by fours to build the stage. She goes and buys the Dubai for right. it, pays for it, and comes and clears it and see it into City Hall. Yeah. And uh, that's fine to get Audubon days back up again, but it's not a good plan for the future. Right. Uh, might be, might not be. So my, well, my thing is, I hate for her to spend her yes. money. I mean, that's a lot of money yeah. she's so, uh, spending. Sure. That could be hurtful. But that is something we can look into as different... Yeah. Um, vendors and such we can set accounts up with. Um, the other thing we'll have to look into is contracts. So right now, um, really, if the city is signing a contract like we do for Rock and Booms, they should be coming through finance and council to approve the contract. Where Audubon days, we hadn't done that. It was just like, you know, Kristen's signing them and whatever, but really the city is on the hook for them if something goes wrong. So we'll have to talk about contracts no as well. Yep. Yeah. So we yeah. Need, you know, we need the proper yeah. So can I make a motion sure. to table it until you can we have meet some more information? We yeah. Yeah. More Molly, information. I would appreciate if you get a little bit involved too, because you handle one of these things pretty much yourself, don't you? She took mine over. Oh, she did. Okay. Well, Sarah, didn't you help Sarah with the Easter basket thing? Or that just no, that's my Audubon days. The last two well, months. Easter basket though is like, you know, we're good. Like, Nine hundred. We we fundraised nine hundred dollars. That that would be a bigger pain for the city than just yeah. putting that through through the bank. Um, I mean that's pretty easy because it's nine hundred dollars. It's not 20, yeah. 29,000 raised, twenty eight thousand spent, and then you know the, the liability mm -hmm. behind it. All right. So okay. I made a motion. I'm going to make a motion to table this until you oh. all brainstorm and. Bring it back. Do you want us to brainstorm like a solution? I mean, I don't have a solution because I think Here's that if the city motion. were to tell me we're gonna we're gonna need you to take the money out of the city and oh you know open up a LLC and and start your own five hundred one c three, I would say well then the city can just. Pick I know up. you might be part of her brainstorm. You might be part of brainstorming her or ideas straight help her. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got yeah. yours worked out. We've got to get hers. My parents got worked out. I just want to see. It So it would be nice to get that. Yeah. She made a motion. There's a second. Any other comments on this from anybody? Thank you guys for thank uh, you guys for running the rock and yeah. yeah. all yeah. fun days. I, Thanks, I, I love yes. community events, and I think it's really important. Please take the roll. Alderman Hinkle? Aye. Alderman Bob Smith? Aye. Alderman Roger Smith? Aye. Motion carries 3 0. Okay. Didn't mean to cut everybody off, but, and yes, thank you. Thank you all. Good night. Good night. Um, Good night. Item number two discuss with possible action 
SQL Server update. I think that it's the upgrade. Well, yeah, either way. Um, so we started working on the Cassell conversion that was approved a couple of months ago, and Cassell will not operate on our current SQL server. So it needs to be upgraded. Um, we have the quote from Wise Guy in there. It's just under 5000 bucks to upgrade it. I know the mayor had talked to Bob about other options, but really this is our only option. And, well, here. At the time we talked about this, I'm a little bit confused because, first of all, this is what, if you think they remember back in May or June, we talked about the difference between Cassell and, and similarity between it and like QuickBooks and other financial and the fact that we weren't using Excel much anymore for spreadsheets. And that because we were switching to ADP, we wouldn't need payroll aspect of to sell, so we might just keep what we had, but now then we decided to upgrade to sell. So Cassell does all of our all of our accounting, yeah. so all of our budgeting, all of our utility billing, all of our accounts we had to payable. Upgrade. We, had to upgrade. we have like the oldest version that they are no longer supporting, and so there's been a number of like different sure. reports and stuff that so, won't generate. Yeah. And, yeah. and like for me, I, I need to upload my journal entries. And I'll get a report saying it happened and it never happened. I've had Cassell look at it and they're like, since you don't have the upgrade, it's just not working. You know, so I have to just make All sure. Of us go this. My QuickBooks I got from somebody over here in 2009. I still use it. It's still fine. But they keep saying we aren't supporting you. Mm -hmm. but it still adds my numbers just fine. Um, and I'm not going to get it because I don't have payroll. And that's generally the upgrades here are for the new tax laws and the new you know, stuff you can take on. But the question is, my question would be, if we are upgrading it and we change this sequential server, which costs as much as a whole computer and it's only 16 megabytes, but that's a scam too, a gigabyte, 16 gigabytes. Anyway, if we do that and now we are eligible or able to, I have this asked to ask this question, if we're able to handle our own payroll now, why aren't we going to do that with the new, uh, with the new Cassell update, upgrade? It's not really comparing apples to apples. ADP is a payroll service. Cassell is a is payroll, a, know, payroll a payroll module it's, it's, where we would we have to enter everything into yeah. Cassell to generate the payroll. Where ADP is a payroll service so right now, that does so the, the payroll. The plan is to save the input by having the department has input their own payrolls into. And well, then they ADP. do ADP is going to do yeah. all of the end of the, the year processing. processing and W twos and, and our, all I wanted was an answer. Yeah. I'm not being critical. Yeah, so, yeah, it's not really it's not really the same same thing. ADP so is a payroll. Yes. My answer to the person who asked yep. Payroll ADP is a payroll service. Cassell is a payroll module that needs somebody to service it. Do we have any other options with this server? No. Not really. Nope. That's what so, we had so looked into. The server we're talking about, we're talking about upgrading a computer and we're buying a uh, new, new server, new, new module from software module from the. Yep, we're upgrading yes. our module or our, our accounting software that runs the city. Right. Yeah. But the new upgrade won't work with the old mm -hmm. server. Correct. Computer. Well, it's a, yeah, it's, it's a computer, but it's a server. It sits on top of it. System. Yeah. So, so the Cassell upgrade was already approved. We already yeah. addressed that. Well, we and, had, we, but we weren't aware yet quite that our right. server needed to be changed. Correct. Mm -hmm. The hardware and the software. We knew the software would have to be, but not the hardware. Yeah. Correct. So I see we're we'll doing um, Dell Business Class Unit and we're doing a Windows Server 2019. All right. Yeah. So just, yeah. But and then the, well, and then the programming of it. And yeah. The, yeah. 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 Uh, which is he does reasonable prices. And I thought the whole thing was. I thought the whole thing was cost about five grand. What is this about? Three it's a little less than five. Yeah, we got to do it. We got to do it. Yep, and like I said, it's uh, they get you on this stuff, and then they keep telling you you're not supported. And wait till Windows mm -hmm. Windows 11 comes through, and all of this will be obsolete too, and you get messages over there. All right. Uh, 
discuss with Bob. Yes, I, I got a question. So, is that part of the upgrading? Um, like so it doesn't become obsolete so no no it, they have to, no every time there's a change in in the uh proprietary uh every time windows decides to do something else in every three or four years they that's how they make money they, they pay for upgrades first you do updates those are free and then after five years they don't support it anymore and they tell you it's out of luck you buy gotta buy a new program Okay, so can I make a motion to approve the update of the server? You can. I am. Yes, please. I'll second it. Mm -hmm. okay. Please take the roll. Alderman Hinkle? Aye. Alderman Roger Smith? Aye. Alderman Bob Smith? Oh, aye. Motion carries. I'll, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Okay. Please take the, take the roll. Alderman Bob Smith? Aye. Alderman Hinkle? Aye. Alderman Roger Smith. Aye. Motion carries 3 0 7 16. Then personnel. Okay. Call personnel meeting to order at 7 16 p.m. Roll call please. Alderman Olson. Here. Alderman Reese. Here. Alderman Abbott. Here. A quorum is present. Okay, can I get a motion to get approval of the minutes from the October 24th and November 14th, 2022 meetings. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the previous meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any discussions, questions yet? Any citizens' comments? None. Okay, other items of discussion, possible action. Discuss with possible action, employee handbook section 4.3 travel policy and meal allowance. That's fine, you want me to? So we just put this in the packet. We um, have had some departments. Our current policy for meal reimbursement is a little confusing. So it it um, we just tried to make it a little bit simpler for people to follow. Um, and then also the breakfast and lunch rate, we were just suggesting to up, uh, up it by a little bit because with today's prices, um, people are having a hard time spending within that. It's not like we have tons and tons of people that use the meal allowance reimbursement, but there's, there's a handful. So I put in there, uh, copy where we crossed off some of the stuff that really didn't make sense and then updated the price. So it's one amount and people don't have to break out tax and tip because I think for Lisa's it's confusing for our employees it's confusing um, and then I would like to add that we do a itemized receipt if we can. Um, most places will do an itemized receipt so just to see what then we have backup for it. I'm okay with that. Um, any other suggestions, comments? Is there any research done as far as uh, <coughs> the, you know, I know everything's going out. Yep, Tracy has all of yep. the information from the state. Yeah. Similar. Yeah. So I would say, like, if I looked at the state rates, um, if you're looking around Appleton, they have different towns, they have different rates. Um, their breakfast is 13, their lunch is 15, their dinner is 26, and they do have an incidental expense uh, a day of $5. And then they have certain things on their first and last day of travel. Um, that you can only spend so much money. So I feel we're pretty even with the federal, or I mean the state, what they allow for people to do. And I think if you just have one amount, it's a lot. I, I mean, it's confusing. And it's too time consuming. People don't want to spend that much time on it. Nobody does. So So can we approve this tonight, right now, or does it have to be recommended? It has to be recommended because we're making a handbook change. Okay. 
I'll make a motion. I have one thing for that. Okay. Um, we just had a situation where we had an employee go and get, get a budget reimbursement. He was at training for two weeks. And um, what's not allowed is alcohol and um, sales tax, which is our current policy. Um, what's being requested is that we have itemized receipts. And you don't always get an itemized receipt when you go to a restaurant that basically says you had a hamburger, you had french fries, you had a water, you had an order of this versus order an order of that. And I, I don't think that it's reasonable to ask someone to go up and get an itemized receipt for that just to get reimbursement. Um, my employees are probably the ones that use the reimbursement the most. It's not in our policy now that we have to have an itemized receipt. Um, I can't find any reason to have that. And uh, um, from my side, of it, I don't want to chase down what people ate for lunch or dinner um, when I hand receipts in, because frankly, I don't care. As long as they filled in with the dollar amount for that particular lunch or dinner or whatever it is, and they submitted the receipt, I think we're good. That's just my two cents with it. I don't have time for that. I have no interest in doing that. So. I've, I've traveled to work before, and what you're saying is consistent with what I've experienced. Nobody cares what you eat for lunch. No. Just, just don't be spending 50 bucks for breakfast. Yeah, that, and as long as you don't have a case of beer on there for dinner. Right, right. And, uh, you know, whatever else. And I, I guess the sales tax that I get there is the idea that the city can't pay or shouldn't pay or whatever the rules are. Well, actually, for dinners, we're fine with the tax on dinners because you're not going to carry that with you because it's normally did tax and tip. That's what it's only. Included. It always had tax and tip, yep. yeah, including tax and tip. We just we made okay, the language a little sense. more, yep. a little more. Uh, so now everything's included, so people don't have to try to figure I can spend this much plus a tip. And with that one, he had claimed alcohol on a receipt, so that's why yeah, I did. That was an oversight on our side. And I get that's why I say most people don't want to spend a ton of time. I get it. Right. You're gonna just put it in there. Mostly when I've traveled, I've been able to get an itemized receipt when I ask for one at the counter. If you forget, then it's really hard to do so. Or if it's a handwritten one, I've taken a, a picture of it and I've handed that in for uh, a receipt. I don't really care as long as it's very, like over a certain amount you need a receipt or maybe under a certain amount, under $10, you don't need a receipt. I mean, I'm fine with that, but I want to yeah, make sure yeah. that it's it's in the policy and I'm following it because ours was kind of vague and I, and I do ask everybody when they submit invoices or whatever that it's one, itemized. One, um, but if it's place, under a certain amount, we can one, do that. One place I work is if it's under a certain amount, you don't even need a receipt. They just get that. Yep. And to mm -hmm. me, that makes sense. Because I just I just find it as the department head if my employee went to whatever restaurant and has a receipt for lunch. I can see that they ate lunch at the restaurant. I don't think I need to know what they ate, but I don't think the itemization is necessary. So. I, I think you could almost reword this a little bit and just say that a receipt is required. I think that's fair. Um, and that no alcoholic beverages will be a reimbursed at any time. So if an alcoholic beverage shows up on a receipt because you happen to get an itemized one, then we can't reimburse that portion of the receipt. Which is our current policy. Yeah. Our current policy doesn't require an itemized receipt. It's not in there. And it says, you know, up to 15% sales tax, I think it is. So oh, Perhaps our 15% tip. That's oh, another thing we changed, tax. too. Yeah. We put 20% because right. that was something we were running into, too, is that they were over tipping. And per the current policy, we couldn't yeah. reimburse yeah. it. So I mean, and I'm fine if we just want to give them a certain per amount per day, but then, yeah, a receipt. But I, like I guess, you know, I like we yeah. we just have to watch. That would make it easier alcohol. for us and easier for Lisa up front because we ran into it. She's confusing me every lunch and dinner. We're a 20% tip, tip with, so we're taking 5% off of that. And we're removing sales tax for this. We're adding too much. It was, it was a waste of time. So, I think it would be a lot easier for everyone. I ask you a no question. No such no. thing as a dumb question. Well, you're the chairman. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I have to ask if I can answer the question. That's the legal way to do it. Um, so, and this goes to the police chief too. Do you have to eat lunch? Do you have to have a? Do you have to? I mean, if you're allowed, some people allow a uh, 
per diem or they allow you can turn in a receipt for breakfast whether you ate one or not or you can turn in a request for reimbursement for a breakfast but you didn't eat one you picked up an apple and normally depends on the times of travel yeah that is in here the yes. times of travel is. and the state offers and i think if you are traveling and you take your own lunch they'll reimburse you like seven dollars or something okay mm -hmm. so you don't actually have to eat lunch no you just have to be on the road and you get this okay you get the answer i was yes like the state right? does the first and last day of travel at 75%, yeah. you know, like we could get it. But I think when we do that, that's making us look at receipts more. Okay, was this the first day? Was that, the, you know, like sometimes if you get into the percent, that might yes. even be a little bit more. I like the meal thing Yep. just because... I, I don't want to know if it was their lunch or dinner. I eat lunch eat early. Dinner. They eat it later. It might be breakfast if I do it. Here's the way I look at it. If we have employees traveling, feed them. Keep it simple. Yeah. Just, it's, it, it, I can't believe if you're talking about that many dollars. Right. And it's not a lot of dollars. Yeah. Just yeah. get, get a receipt. way to it. simplify it, if you don't mind, is just to probably have a day total. Like you can't exceed this dollar amount for the day. I don't think we necessarily need to get picking and choosing over breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, <coughs> the one thing I'll say that I don't agree with is the per diem make extra money by not taking food or whatever. Um, that's more of a private sector thing than a public sector thing. I think, yeah, I think right. The only question I would have about the per day thing is then you have somebody that leaves at noon for a training are we paying them for that whole day or are we well, paying them for only half of the day we have it on the sheets where it's like it, it has like breakfast lunch dinner so that it's easy to put you know what mine people may think is my breakfast is really my lunch because i eat early but hers may be later. So, I mean, I would consider that a lunch and they can just put it on that line. I'm not gonna look at the time of day or anything like that, but you know, if, if they just wanna put it on that line item per amount, I think it should be pretty easy. Yeah, for my department, if someone leaves for training for the day, their, their entire day is consumed in that training, that's when we would model the reimbursement. That's what I've always looked at. If you left at noon for training, we would turn so you have to be your entire day has to be filled with that training in order to get reimbursement for anything. That's the way I always that's how the state I think does that's it how too. So in that instance they're saying that just have the total day allowance would be simplified. I like the total day allowance, but I also believe that they have to prove that they spent the money too. I don't believe that it's responsible for taxpayers to give that money for D I'm gonna just say, hey, here's right. the money for the day do you do on it, but I think that there still has to be a check and balance that's being used for food. Um, but a receipt's reasonable. Yeah. But I don't think it's necessary to say, well, you get this much for breakfast, this much for lunch, this much for dinner. You just, what receipts do you have for the three and what it adds up to, which you'll reimburse if you exceed it. You get the daily amount that's allowed, and anything over above that, your responsibility. So that, that's allowed. I think that's pretty much out of the way. Yeah. Great. I'm still confused by that though, Ryan. So here it says if they leave before blah, blah, blah time, they can have breakfast. They can't have breakfast. So if you have somebody that's leaving at noon and they have to stay overnight, so now they get dinner with it, do would you give them the full amount for that day just for the dinner? Or well, is it still helpful to have a breakdown for dinner, I lunch, think it's and still breakfast? Helpful with that instance where you get X amount for dinner. Uh -huh. That's how we've always done. Yep. I think it might be easier on the employee to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then they just know, oh, I'm gone over lunch, so I get a lunch or whatever. Then they kind of know. Yeah, and yeah. but if they're there for all three, then it's just a total amount. And then we don't have to mess with the breakfast was seven dollars, and lunch was thirty-eight, and dinner was fifteen. And we don't get a total, you know, for for the whole day. That you, you know, you've got all three enters that get you there. Can you really do it both ways like that? I don't know. I was just thinking. So we could. One way or the other. Well, the scenario that Sarah just described is a little funky to me, though, because 
you made it seem like they leave during the day and then they're staying overnight. So the breakfast would actually fall under the next morning if they're returning, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'm thinking like myself. When I go to this clerk's training, I have to leave on Sunday afternoon, and I'm there Sunday night until Friday or whatever. So really, I'm gone part of the day on Sunday, and then I'm gone for multiple days. So it's I, in my brain, it's hard to break it down by day because in some cases, you're only going to have a partial day. Right. Where it's really kind of easier to say breakfast, I have 15, lunch, I have 20, and dinner, I have 25. Just I think as an employee. Can't do it both ways. Right. You have to do it one or the other. So, do the department's head or have any just, bottom line, I want to make it easy for employees to follow. Mm -hmm. Easy for accounting, easy for department heads. And just make sure that it's a reasonable way for them to easily feed themselves without a whole lot of room or um, I like the idea of the Senate rather than say an itemized receipt to say receipt. Here's my receipt for breakfast, here's my receipt for lunch, here's my receipt for dinner. Yeah. Receipts, no alcohol, 15, 20, 25, tip of 20%? Or do you even want the tip? We had 15% before, but we thought we wanted to yeah, give the option of people giving the put, 20%. I think you got it. Oh, the because yeah. that's pretty normal anymore, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Anything that works for you, Ryan? Perfect. Yeah, okay. Okay, can I recommend this goes to council again for approval? Do we agree to take off the word itemized? Yep, we'll I'm take good that off of there. Guys, I'll follow what you guys do. I just want to, I interpret it as itemized, so as long as you guys are good without itemized, then I'll follow that. I'll make a motion to send this to council, uh, dependent on removing the word item under the LLC section one. I'll second that. Is this a vote or is this yes. all in favor? All in favor, sign. All in favor. All in favor. All right. Aye. 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 I will make a motion to adjourn at 7 p.m. Second that motion as well. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. We're adjourned. We're adjourned. We're adjourned. We're adjourned. We're adjourned.